Schrodinger. So, I want to introduce all of you guys to my new baby Schrodinger. Schrodinger, I'm going to introduce you to everyone online. So, we talk about astrophysics a lot. Alexa, stop. As I'm sure you know. And, of course, he's named after Schrodinger, like the Schrodinger equation. I know. I know. I know, baby. I know. I'm going to, I got him lots of physics, um, little toys, which is really fun. So I just wanted to say hi to everyone and introduce my new baby, which is why I've been a little bit MIA and doing videos. Um, I just got him, but, um, I'm going to start doing a video uh, this afternoon. So I'm really, really excited. Yeah. What do you think? I know. I know. Okay. Bye guys. I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about Schrodinger and why exactly I named this little kitty uh, Schrodinger. So I know I mentioned a little bit earlier that it's named after the Schrodinger equation, which I did talk about in a video if you guys wanted to check that out. But I wanted to talk a little bit about Schrodinger's cat, which a lot of people uh, tend to bring up a little bit. And I want to talk about what exactly it really was. So um, I spoke briefly uh, before with you guys about Schrodinger's equation, which is uh, quantum entanglement. So also known as Wachstung. Um, that's my best pronunciation of the word. Anyway, so uh, Schrodinger's equation is really based on the superposition of particles of uh, where the, the quantum state is of a certain particle and specifically we're talking about like waves or like tiny subatomic particles like quarks um, but in this case we're talking about um, a kitty and so it's called Schrodinger's cat and it's also known as cat in a box and it's it's a bit uh, kind of morbid a little bit because they talk about whether the cat's dead or alive and he's always gonna be alive always gonna be alive because mama takes care of you but um, with this equation it talks about like what are the different possibilities that the the cat would be um, both dead and alive simultaneously and at what point does the quantum um, entanglement actually stop and what point does it go from um, not knowing the actual position of, of the particle and the actual state of the particle um, to actually knowing it and that's when obviously like the box is open so I've spoken briefly with you guys before about um, quantum entanglement like if I were to separate like two shoes and like or let's say like um, this cat toy and um, like this giant cat toy, right? And I put them both in a box. And no one sees what box each of them are in, but I send one of them to New York and I have one here in California. And I have someone open it up, um, like someone in New York open up their box. Exactly at that moment that they open the box and see that it's this toy, instantaneously they know that the opposite box, the one out here, has this toy. So that's, the, 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 the big pondering question is where does the quantum state end? So where is it going from both existing as, um, the, for instance, the cat, so both dead and alive, and then it goes from the knowledge base of knowing when it's dead or alive. So it's, it's pretty trippy and I really love quantum mechanics because there's so much I don't understand about it. There's so much a lot of us don't understand about it. But um, it's interesting just because like the behavior of particles on a subatomic scale are so different than things in like the macro world. And so um, I also just really liked how smart this physicist was, uh, Schrodinger, which is why I named him Schrodinger. I know you know your own name. And um, so I'm gonna get him a whole bunch of like physics toys and stuff and I wanna actually start trying to teach him um, like, I don't know how to compute maybe. Um, I wanna start doing like little games where he's actually like counting things. Now what bothered Schrodinger so much was something known as the Copenhagen interpretation. And the Copenhagen interpretation um, is saying how you have um, an existence of two different states of a particle or a, a thing. So like, you know, let's not talk about the cat, for instance, we'll talk about um, the superposition of um, say like a photon, you, you know, it's either um, a wave or it's a light, but until a situation happens where it's directly observed, um, the quantum mechanics recognizes it as both a particle and a wave. So they see it as both of those, but until some type of subatomic situation happens and then the moment that it's actually observed, that's the moment that then um, it's determined what the position is of whatever you know the object is. So with the cat, if the cat's in the box, um, 
until we actually make a direct observation the cat's both dead and alive simultaneously. And so the way this is explained through the Schrodinger equation is it's um, psi, which is the wave function, it's the little symbol, the Greek symbol psi. And it's the wave function pretty much says that um, the existence of the cat being dead and alive is both sounds kind of weird, but it's both smeared throughout existence in that moment. So pretty much like if you were to try and calculate it, you would be calculating it as um, both dead and alive at the same exact time until that exact moment of the Copenhagen interpretation, which is when you open the box and find out whether he's dead or alive. And there's, it is a thought experiment. So they do talk about um, a few different things as far as like, uh, <laughs> different options. So it's not just like, oh yeah, the cat's in a box and there's a beaker of um, like uh, toxic waste or something like that. They have a few different options. And they say like, you know, in one of the situations, it uh, the, the, you know, the beaker breaks and, and the cat dies. In the other situation, the beaker doesn't break and the cat dies. But then they're saying like, wait a second, but until we actually observe it on the quantum scale, the beaker both broke and didn't break at the same exact time, causing the cat to be both dead and alive. And it's so trippy and it's, it's just crazy because like, it's, <laughs> I just, I like, again, I love quantum mechanics. I love talking about it and that's a brief explanation of it, but there's still so much mathematics and physics behind it, trying to understand what exactly it means. Um, and why it is that things change in the macro world. I mean, you think about it. Look, look at you. So right now it's definitely a paradox. It's super paradoxical. Um, but yeah, so that's that. And this is my kitty and I wanted to introduce him to you guys. And yeah, Schrodinger. Yeah. Okay. Say bye bye. Say bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Mm -hmm. I'll catch you guys soon. Bye.